Alright, so today we're going to be doing just a quick little video on how to render down your own lard. We butchered pigs this week and we got big pile of fat. So we're going to be turning all this fat into some shelf stable lard that we can just put away on the shelf for the next year. So when it comes to your fat, there's two different kinds of fat you have and we have both of those here. The first fat in the small container here, this is called leaf fat. It turns into leaf lard. This is the lard that's inside the animals. It's around their kidneys and their liver. This is really good for baking pastries, anything that you want a nice mellow taste. You don't want that porky taste that you're gonna get somewhat from the other lard. So we're gonna be doing these separately. We're gonna focus on the big pan lard here. This is what's considered back fat. This comes off the outside area of the animal. So once you take their skin off, there is this huge area of just fat all around them. And so what we've done is we've taken this off, we chopped this up. So I went on and put this through our meat grinder and ground it up just to make it smaller. But you don't have to do that. You can just leave it in big chunks. Just when you get it smaller like this, it makes the process a little bit quicker. When you start looking at this, there's a lot of ways that you can cook this down. I mean, you can put this in a crock pot, you can put it in the oven, you can put this onto a bowl over boiling water. There is a very popular method of rendering lard where you actually cook the lard in with water to render that down. It is a really great method for some people, but I don't do mine like that. Or you can put this straight into a pot or a cast iron skillet. That's what I'm going to be doing today. That's how I like to do my lard. I'm just going to be putting all this into this big Dutch oven here and I'm just going to start letting it slowly render down. Leaf fat, that's going to be done separately. I am going to be doing that on a bowl on top of boiling water, but that's going to be done in a little while. So when you start doing this, you don't want to just dump this whole amount of lard into your cast iron. You want to start with just a little bit to start getting a nice good layer of liquid fat in there. Once you start getting that in there, then you can go ahead and dump all this in there and then just let it start rendering down. You want to start with a nice dry Dutch oven or a pot if that's what you're going to be using. If you have a thicker po bottom pot, that works a lot better because it distributes the heat a little bit more evenly. You do not want to add water to this. So that's when you start putting this in here, it might stick just a little bit, but you don't want to add water you know, to make that so it doesn't happen because then you're going to have to take longer to boil all the moisture out of this. So just start with a couple handfuls, put it in here and just start letting it render down really slowly. And there is some pieces of meat that's ground up in here too, just some smaller pieces and that's fine. It doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to start with just about this amount and then just go ahead and just get that cooking down some. Just gonna smear this around some. Start getting a nice, good greased layer in the cast iron. When you first start getting this going, just make sure you stir this until this gets melted. You don't want this to burn right away because then you're gonna have some really porky tasting lard. All right, so this has started to melt down, and I have enough liquid in the bottom here. I can go ahead and start adding the rest of that lard to it. So I just slowly add mine in here, and then once it starts to melt down just a little bit, I'll add some more. I don't want to put so much fat in here that I can't, you know, really get under here and stir it and really scrape the bottom because then there's a chance that your bottom could burn. And so as it cooks down, then I just go and add more. You just want to remember when you're doing this just to keep this low and slow. You really can't rush this process. You have to keep this at a low temperature. So if you raise that temperature up and you start melt, trying to melt it quicker, then you're going to get like a more of like a grayish, brownish lard. And when you start changing colors like that, then it just gets to be a stronger flavor. I mean, it's still really good, but it's just going to have more, I guess you could say more of a porky flavor, the darker it gets. And so I've done this before with, uh, you know, not grinding it like this, but just cutting it in chunks, even with the skin still on. And you can do it with the skin on, that's fine. You are going to get a darker um, lard when you leave the skin on, but it still tastes really good. And then you have some super, super thick cracklings. And that's what all this stuff here will turn into, cracklings. So 
So this is looking good here. I'm starting to get a few little bubbles in it now. So we have both of these pots of the lard going back here. I ended up having to take some out of the big pot because it was all the way to the top and I was really getting concerned that, you know, once that started rendering down and there was a lot more grease in there that we would end up with the grease fire that started bubbling. And so I went on and just took some of that out, put it in a smaller pot back here but those are going really good and so I decided I was going to go ahead and start working on the leaf fat. So I'm going to go ahead and put this leaf lard into this stainless steel bowl here and then I'm just going to put it back here on the stove on top of a pot of water. I had this pot probably filled up halfway full of water and as that water heats up and starts boiling it's going to slowly melt this fat. So this is the leaf fat here and it's starting to melt down just a little bit just by sitting over hot water and we'll just let that sit there until the whole bowl melts down. That leaf lard has melted down really nicely, but it's not finished yet. It still has some moisture in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it, strain all the little particles that are left out of it, and then put that just the plain oil back into that pan and then just let it cook for just a little bit longer. That way all the moisture will evaporate out of it. So I've got a clean, dry bowl that I'm gonna put it in. And then I have just a metal colander lined with a double layer of cheesecloth and I'm going to pour that lard through there that way it catches all of the particles. I'm going to put this into the bowl and then we're going to dump all of that in here carefully because it's really hot. So once you get all these particles out of here you're left with a nice clean hole. I'm just going to put this back onto the boiling water and then just let it cook down and make sure all that moisture is evaporated out of it. This was starting to get just a little bit darker than I wanted it to. I'm gonna go ahead and strain this out and put whatever fat is left into the big pot. And then I'm gonna put the oil back into the little small pan and then just let it cook for a little while longer just to make sure all the moisture's out of it as well. So these bubbles here are the moisture cooking out of that fat and that is what you want to go the entire time until all that fat is rendered. So now I'm scooping out all those particles that didn't render down. Once I get all that scooped out, I'm going to strain that oil through cheesecloth just to make sure everything's out of it. And then I'll put that oil back into a clean pan and put it back onto the stove and continue letting it simmer until all the moisture is evaporated. So these are the particles that I'm taking out of the pan of oil. I'll put this back onto the stove and cook this at a really high temperature until it gets crispy to make cracklings. So you can see the bubbles here, there's still moisture in this. So we're just gonna keep cooking this down until there's no bubbles at all, till it's nice and smooth. This is all done, there's no bubbles in here, so this is ready to be put into jars. Now one thing with your jars, you need to have clean, dry jars. You don't want any kind of moisture in this jar because we just kept this simmering on the stove to get all the moisture out. And so you don't want a wet jar and then put you know, your oil into your wet jar because then you're gonna have moisture back in there. And another thing, you wanna have warm jars. You don't wanna be putting this super hot liquid into a cold jar because you take a chance of breaking your jar. And the way that I keep my jars just warm is I have like this little seedling heat mat that I use in the springtime. And then so I just wash that off and bring it in here and put a towel over it and set my jars and my lids on the heat mat and it just keeps them warm and so they are ready to use. And so when we're filling these jars up, you don't have to worry about a headspace on here because we are not processing these. They're not going into a water bath and they're not being pressure canned. What we're doing is we're putting hot liquid into a warm jar and then our lids are also warm. So as soon as we put that liquid in here, we're putting that warm lid on here and sealing it up. And as this jar cools, it just makes a seal. And then we're just gonna take this and put in storage and this will be good to use for the next year.
Now this is a yellow color and that is the normal color it's supposed to be at right now. Once this cools and solidifies, this will turn a nice creamy white color. So make sure you wipe the top of your jar off and then just go ahead and put your lid on and your ring. Tighten that down and then just put it aside and that will make a seal as it cools. So here you can see the difference between the back fat and the leaf fat. You can see that they are different colors when they are in a liquid state, but once those get solid, you can't really tell that much of a difference. This is all the cracked ones that was left out of the lard, and I'm just gonna go ahead and cook these on a high temperature and then crisp them up. I finished that lard up late last night and these have been sitting here for about 12 hours and they are all solidified. Um, they all did seal. This is the ones that we've done the back fat on and this is the leaf fat. It's just a very, very slight d difference in the color. And the reason why there's not such a huge difference is because I did this such on low, a low temperature for so long. And I really can't emphasize that enough. Just you have to do it very low and slow. This is one that I did last year and the temperature got too high and you can not tell a difference in this. There's not, there's nothing wrong with it. It's still good. It's not bad. It's just have more, it has more of a stronger flavor. And so when you use this for cooking, you're going to have more of that pork taste, but it's still really, really good. If you have any of these that don't seal, it, it's fine. Sometimes mine don't seal. You just want to use those jars first. And you also, if you are not pressure canning these, you're just going to want to keep these in a nice cool place. You're not going to want to put it, you know, where it's directly in the sun or it's getting really hot. Um, the place I have that I put my stuff in, it stays cool year round. And so that's where I'm going to put this stuff. So the stuff that did not render down is considered cracklings and I keep that and put it in small baggies in my freezer and I really like to use that to flavor my cornbread and so anytime I make cornbread I just take one of those bags out and dump it in and then you have crackling cornbread. It's a southern thing. It's very very good. So there is a lot of ways to render lard. This is my favorite way to do it. You just can't rush it. You got to take your time doing it. Just make sure when you're doing this you really do this slow and get all the bubbles out of that oil. If you're still having bubbles coming up from the bottom that means that you have moisture in that still and I can tell you from experience it's, it's very heartbreaking to ruin an entire batch of lard I have done it and had to throw all that hard work out so make sure there's no moisture in there that is going to wrap it up for this video but make sure you keep an eye out in the future we will be having a video coming out showing how we butcher our pigs and what we do with that meat starting from the beginning of the process all the way to the end I will see you on the next video